Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. This is a kind of a mix bag here. We're going for something a little bit different today. It's a season, kind of best of season, and it's a kind of horror one, you know. Something we we do like to do. Yes. And it's our favourite episodes of Supernatural Season 1. Which was kind of hard. I'm glad that. Mm, yeah, you, most, most seasons are just proper standout episode for me and if you're not familiar with Supernatural how dare you it's going on to its 13th season uh, it's about two brothers who've been raised by their dad to hunt demons ghouls and all sorts of monsters apart from dragons uh, wasn't there a dragon episode like I can't remember <laughs> I think there was like some kind of like not an actual dragon but a like a monster that was like a dragon. Well, let's uh, let's we'll get onto that once we get around to that season. Uh, so this is a kind of we're going to pick our f- favorite episode each, but we're also going to touch upon other things throughout the show that throughout this season of the show that stood out for us and made us love the characters on the yeah. show. So to start off. The pilot with the two brothers, Dean, who's played by Jensen Ackles. Oof. Oof. Quite feeling for James. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. And Jared Padalecki plays Sam Winchester. Sam has went away from the hunting and he's going to university and he, want, he wants a different life. But Dean tracks him down and says that uh, their dad hasn't been back in a few days and he's left his... No, he's not. They they find the uh, journal at the police station, don't they? Yes. Yeah. So basically, the first season is about them trying to hunt, uh, track find their, their dad. dad, find their dad, you know, and go back to their hunting ways. Well, for Sam anyway. So we we get this kind of grim, dark story throughout the show, which is what really hooked me. Like I love my horror movies and stuff, and. To be honest, a lot of these episodes are very reminiscent of indie horror movies just done on the short. Yeah. Like the Scarecrow Man. Like uh-huh. The Scarecrow episode is amazing. And there's like there is CGI Skin in the show. As, as well. well. Skin is good. Ooh. Uh, Skinwalker. Oh, aye, aye. <laughs> I don't know what you were talking about. <laughs> Come on, talk about skin. Say names. Uh, no, Hookman as well, another brilliant uh, horror episode. But it does have its kind of, rid- I would say, ridiculous, like Route 666. Yeah. The racist uh, ghost truck. That is based on a true story, but like most of the stuff in this show is based on true stories. like Which is kind of like... Legend. Yeah, yeah, well allegedly true stories you know yes. <laughs> like, um, but like that's one of the main things that kind of drew me into it because like I like all that sort of like creepy sort of old ghost story sort of shit that kind of like the sort of paranormal not paranormal TV fuck that so Blair Witch is where my basic sort of foundation in horror sort of stuff started Yeah. Um, and as I said like we I think I jumped on around about season 7 and yeah. as soon as like I was through, or I'd caught up. Pretty much just stuck with it since then, and I haven't looked back because it's a brilliant show. Yeah, I um, picked up uh, halfway through season four when they were actually still doing the half season box sets, God, that which was, was I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> tough like, man. I know that it was tough because you're like, oh, I've got half the season. Oh, I need to wait for the the other. I, re- I remember getting out a blockbuster. That's how long ago it Ouch, was, man. man. I know, man. That is kicking you're the ball. You're showing your age here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll dive into some of our favourite monsters yes. and stuff of the show. And then we'll touch on our favourite episodes. Uh, I think I might be clashing with your favourite episode with my one of my favourite monsters. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Uh, my favourite episodes came down to two uh, for this season. I think it that was, was the Bloody same. Mary and another one which I'll leave for I'll leave the review for later. <laughs> and Bloody Mary to me was it really struck with me so well because it was a, a tale reminiscent of uh 
like Candyman, like say the name yeah. three times in the mirror, the monster appears, and also the Box ring, which you was right up. absolutely horrifyingly scary. I don't know why people mess with these sort of powers. No, man. like you don't fuck with this shit. Um, but yeah, this this is what what no, I was kind of tied between two as well for this being my favourite one, but I think I went with this one because it's a, a legend that is reasonably well known. It is something that is, obviously it's not one that's an original one, but it's a yeah. good take on it sort of thing. Oh yeah. So like, I'm always, obviously I've usually like going for stuff that is a lot more original, but this take on it was really good. Um, I liked the whole sort of story behind it and whatnot, because it starts off as three wee girls playing Bloody Mary at a sleepover. I think they were like yeah. they were 10, 12 year olds. Yeah. And then what the weird thing is, is nothing happens to the wee girls, but they're their dad, or one, one, of, one, one of the girls' dads, is ends up dead, pretty yeah, much. Brain um, liquefied. Brain liquefied, eyes, eyes liquefied as well, um, which also brings us on to, you know, how corrupt some of the fucking medical people are on this show, because apparently uh, you yeah, can get bribed. So Just uh, like, oh, we've been, we're doing a, a research paper. Yeah. No, I can't help you. Here's some money. Yep, okay. No oh, problem. we need to see the police report. Oh, I can't really show you that as well. But more like, money gets more handed money, over. You know. It, it's That's the thing. That, like we said about uh, some other th- shows and stuff and other movies, that you do need the little light-hearted humour injection to just kind of take take you out and make lull you into a false sense of security, you know? Yeah. Make you feel safe for those couple of minutes. So they can make you back. Yeah. So they can make them shit yourself pretty oh, much. Of course. Um so like one of the main things you know about Sam and Dean is obviously because they're hunters, they never use well, they hardly ever use their real names when they're starting off. They'll oh. Eventually they'll end up getting their real names away, but they always use code names and it's always like, like rock stars. famous rock stars. Although McCartney and, the, and Lennon and uh, in the newer ones, I'm pretty Simon sure. Simon and Garfunkel and stuff. I'm pretty sure in the new ones they've gone with Gaga at one point, haven't they? Like um I can't remember to be honest, but it that's the I'm thing. pretty sure I have, <laughs> but I haven't made lot, that up. There's a lot of funny stuff in the, uh, in the show, and it's for a, a kind of dark rock and roll kind of like feel to it. Like that's the thing. They're still using cassette tapes for uh, music in the car and stuff, and you know, like yeah, this is how old I feel. Like uh, in one of my f- episodes, uh, one of my favorite episodes of all time for the show, he's using a flip phone, and it's from this uh, season, and I'm like. God, is it is it really like that old that flip phones, phones were <laughs> still like about and stuff? I feel old as fuck watching this. I know nowadays they're walking around with iPhones and stuff like that. How are you I doing know. that? You don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> but mm. uh, yeah, because I've dabbled on it. Why don't you take it away about your favorite episode? Right. So Bloody Mary is my favorite episode because of obviously, as I said, more of a real life sort of feel to it. I know obviously like some people are a bit sceptical, they go, I kinda of believe in most of this shit. Oh, <laughs> um, oh yeah. So like obviously being in that sort of mindset, this one kinda stood out to me because it was one of the first ones that was that felt it was always more of a popular legend, I'd say. Or a well known legend anyway. Um that they touched on. Um brain fog. Uh, what is it? Right, and like obviously going through, like they kind of touch on the legend and whatnot, and like they do in the show, they do try and stick to like as much of the source material as oh possible. Yeah. So like sometimes, obviously, they'll like yeah, in Buffy and stuff like that, they'll maybe mimic something about to try and make it sound like nothing to do with. Well, yeah, make it more relevant. I make stuff. it more relevant, but they kind of stick to the sort of like you know old fashioned like they always uh, they always show you in the show like them doing their research on the certain subject that they're tracking down and whatnot. So they do do it like they're basically like, you know, two Batmans. Like they do the prep work before they tackle this bad boy. Unless they're Dean who just tends to just go in all guns Gung blazing. Ho. Aye. Um Sam's Mel the Techie who's, you know, has to think everything through before he goes straight in. Dean's Mel the Muscle. Um even though uh, Sam is a bit a foot taller than him. Yeah, the Sam's <laughs> and he's most of that foot is in hair. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, As later seasons prove. Yes, yes. I don't think he's ever had a haircut. Where it looks no. Like, no. Um, but 
as I said, it's a good sort of point to kind of, I wouldn't say start off, but obviously you start at the beginning, but like, that is one of the ones that kind of sticks out for me because it feels like a real life event sort of thing, because there are obviously incidents out there that people blame on stuff like Bloody Mary, and it's some of it goes along the same sort of lines this episode goes along, some obviously differ, depending, because, you know, does it really exist and stuff. Yeah. But some of these episodes really do make you question some of this stuff. Um, this was one for me, because it was kind of a wee bit creepy. I've never played Bloody Mary, I've no intentions I of it. I have no intention to do yeah, that either. Because of this episode mainly, and from other source material, but it's just like, don't, don't muck with this shit. Like, no. Uh, but it's... The boys basically track down what's happening with the Bloody Mary um, or who is, is responsible for it and I can't remember I can't remember how they, de- they dealt with it to be honest like uh, the mirror the mirror was oh like it was any it was not any reflective surface sort of yeah. thing so it wasn't it wasn't but just mirror, it was but like there is a haunted mirror yeah that kind of like embodies a ghost or trapped or her, trapped her spirit in uh, which they end up having to destroy and stuff yeah but that's the thing that I tied to, like, being one of my s- favourite scary monsters, which, uh, like, she's crawling out at, like, uh, Samara. I the think ring. so. Aye. From the ring? Yeah. Aye. Uh, like, uh, that, that terrifies me. Aye. Like, fucking in dead and creepy. <laughs> like, the ring will s- make me scared shitless. <laughs> and that is, to me, one of my favourite episodes of season one, because it'll, that's the thing. Season one was very dark and mood setting and that honestly feels like a little indie horror movie just condensed you know and that's what this whole show was all about to start with just go for the horror and maybe shock appeal you know of having something so dark you know uh in later seasons if Calm down uh, they, they, they have calmed down and I would like to see them revisit a good horror tale like Bloody Mary yes definitely um, so what what can you say like Bloody Mary creepy creepy as shit creepy as creepy fuck. as shit uh, mirrors alone in the dark are a oh wee bit creepy fuck. man like but fucking like if you see my co- uh, hallway like yeah. I, like at times when I'm in alone I will not look in that mirror for fear of seeing something Behind reflected you. in the kitchen. I'm fucking just like, nope, never saw in. But uh, I said about my scary monster and it tied in well with yours. What's your favourite scary monster from season one? Season one. Um, I think it would probably have to go to the Wendigo. From nice, I the second episode. Second episode, yes. Um, purely because at first, like the way the episode pl- pans out is... Sam and Dean think they're after a werewolf, which I, I fucking love werewolf. I love wolves in general, fucking direwolf straights and all that, <laughs> you know? But, um, so I was kind of excited to see a dire, uh, hang out, a, a werewolf, but then I found out that it was going to be a wendigo, and I was like, what the fuck is a wendigo? Yeah. And then when you find out what a wendigo is, it's like a werewolf, but cooler and shit. So, right, so I think it was the epi- second episode. Yeah, second yes. episode for Wendigo. Uh, so I so already they're in. I think they're in the woods looking for like one of the. Yeah, this beast. Aye, because I've heard on. I can't remember if they they hear the obviously scanning police reports and stuff like that for any sort of trace of their dad. And they come across this, and it's one of the hikers has gone missing, and like the rangers aren't willing to help out anymore because they think it's a bear. I think they've attacked it and whatnot. And then it turns out that it's actually a Wendigo, which is kind of like a werewolf. Yeah, yeah, um, it's like a, I would say a more man and wolf kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like, um, when you see it, it's like, it's like more of a, it's, it's cool and practical effects, first of all, because like, I like it when horror movies use practical effects over CGI, because CGI kind of sucks nowadays, like, get everything CGI. That's the thing, like, if you do bad CGI, sometimes it does play off well. Yeah, but that's... Like, if it, if it suits the, the, the movie and stuff, but that's the thing with uh, this show, like, they go practical, and yeah. it's beautiful. It's like old school stuff, like George Romero stuff and that. Um, So, like... When they find out it's a Wendigo, they find out like how to kill it and whatnot, which is mainly with fire, pretty much. Yeah. Kill, kill it with fire. It's usually the go-to. It's usually everything. Uh, go yeah. to Kardashians, kill with fire. Wendigo, kill with fire. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so, they f- 
basically hunting this thing down. So I think it's, it's is it Dean that gets captured? It's either Dean or it's one of them gets captured anyway. Yeah. Um, and they think, well, Sam or the another brother is obviously just not going to give up until he finds his other brother. And this is a good like sort of sort of family moment sort of thing. But it's not like one of them soppy family moments. It's like I ain't letting this thing fucking kill my brother. And it's good to show that sort of thing, especially in these sort of circumstances, because you don't know because they're brothers. Brothers fight a lot. And That's the thing. It's something throughout the show. It's 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 a family. Well, it's not, it's really not a family, family show, show but it's like got family feels in it. You aye. know, like constantly you feel sorry for one of the brothers because they they do kind of go through a little bit of a cycle with them, where one will know something, another one's keeping a secret, and then they'll reveal halfway down through the season, and then they'll split up for a couple of episodes and back together, and it d- it does get a little bit recycled, but you know. You it works. It, it works. So why mess with it? Yeah. Uh, what about any iconic episodes, like other other than your favourite that stand out to you? Well, iconically, like, I've obviously kind of got to go with like the final episode because it's the first time we hear the song. Yes. That is repeated at the start <sighs> of every final episode, which yeah. is "Carry On My Wayward Son" yeah. by Kansas. Oh man! What a fucking tune! Yeah. Um. Is like for supernatural fans. As soon as you hear that tune, you kind of get a wee lump in your heart because you're like, something's gonna, someone's either gonna die, some shit's gonna go down. Shit is about to go down. And like, you don't like on the, obviously in the first season you don't know any of this, and then by second season you kind of pick up on it, and then third you already know, and then oh, by and then by season twelve you're like, <laughs> who's dying now? Aye, aye. Like, you're pretty much fucked by the end oh, of the season, you know. You're an emotional um, roller coaster. This this song is more of a symbolic thing around like most supernatural fans now because it's a warning in yeah. cases. That some shit's going to happen because you might be watching it and you might forget like how many episodes you've watched and then you find out this is the last episode by hearing the song, um, which is kind of annoying if you're watching it on Netflix because sometimes they skip over the intro. Yeah. And then like so you miss out and then you find out that's the last episode and you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it's just it's it's just one of them songs. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of rock songs that are tied in with uh, this show. Yeah, especially like, uh, in, the, in the first season, it was mainly like, obviously, like ACDC, there was, I mean, the other ones, like uh, Asia Survivor making an appearance. Survivor and the Tiger. Asia the making an appearance Asia at some point. season um, three. Uh, what do you mean at some point? That's It's uh, not season one, right, is what right, I'm saying. Okay, like, I'm not see, trying to see spoil when it. we get to season three, that is my favourite episode. I'm saying that right now. It's going to be, that one's going to be a, a double episode, because that one's a fucking excellent oh. episode. I love that episode. But, uh, yeah, iconic episodes... I can't help but feel that, where are we, where are we, where are we, Bugs doesn't get enough love, it's the one, it's it's kind of like uh, Poltergeist, it, the aye, burial aye. ground, the homes are on the burial ground, oh, and like all new, the bugs, new builds yeah. and all that, ah, yeah, I like that, that uh, as much as I hate the episode because it's I hate bugs, and it's <laughs> not really so, so much a monster as like vengeful aye. spirits, uh, forcing these bugs to do things, things, <laughs> uh, because that kind of terrifies me that it will actually happen to someone. Yeah. Uh, like it, it, it's very reminiscent and kind of homage pain to s- shows like X Files. Yeah, it felt very much like a episode sh- plot straight from X Files, and for those, well, we kind of touched on the subject. There's a new build of homes and stuff, and all these bugs start like eating people alive, and I think they eat their brains and shit, Aye, like, and kill well. them. And it's a thing that carries on. Yeah, you find out that it's because that it's uh, this new build of homes is on a Indian bur- burial ground, and obviously, eventual spirits are channeling uh, to that. Like they're angry; they want this. That their land has been desecrated. And it's they're they're kind of like they're pushing fuck. them out. They're pissed off. Let's oh, be honest. come on! Somebody setting up home on top of your fucking uh, head. Fucking right. As you said, like it does pay homage to like, like X Files, um, the Poltergeist movies yes. as well. Also, like I know, like it's, it's not like obviously an original one because yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that Buffy did something along the same lines. It was like an Indian burial ground or something. Um, but I, it's something that's it's a show that 
takes a lot of subjects that have been done a good few times and actually improves on it a yeah, good, good number of times as well. It's a, it's a nice fresh take, you know. Even though it's like what thirteen years old ah. now, like it's still actually pretty fresh. It's a fresh concept. Another one is Scarecrow, like. That is terrifying. That was that reminded me of Beetlejuice. That one, yeah. Like the when Beetlejuice was scary. Oh, aye. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, first half, like of the first just a scarecrow <laughs> being, well, just killing folk and whatever. Aye. It's like that. That episode is one of the like proper scary moments of season one. Yeah, and it's just like, nah, fuck this. I'm out of here. Bye. You can S- kill whoever you want. <laughs> is scarecrow, the one where the villagers are offering up a sacrifice, or is that a different one? Is that mm-hmm. Hookman? Uh, or Candyman or one that. I think that's a later one. That's a later one. It's been a while oh, since I've actually watched it. that episode because it terrifies me so much. Well, that's that's, that's how well this show does it. Like it terrifies me to a point of nope, can't watch that. Well, but that's just uh, another way to look forward to then. Yes. The of it. <laughs> uh, going on to my favorite episode is Hell House. Like this episode. It, it's got a lot of things in it which I love. It's got your kind of genuine ghost story, which is a kind of a, a staple for the show. Then it's got your kind of first inklings of this kind of brotherly feud where they like play pranks on each other and stuff. Uh, and it also introduces two of my favourite kind of B-listers characters in the show. Uh, the ghost facers, Harry and Ed. Who are basically like parody versions of any of the sort of ghost hunter they sort of yeah more like go like ghost hunting TV shows and stuff yeah. like that. Um, it's good to see someone finally taking a dig at these people. Of course, <laughs> because uh, all their little spirits telling them that shit's going down. You know, mm. it's shit. Uh, it's you know, it, it is very fun. It's. A as much as it's uh, as a kind of scary episode, uh, it's actually a pretty funny episode as well. Aye. To give you a little bit of the story, there's this haunted house of this guy Mordecai, and there's a whole backstory and stuff. But when Sam and Dean go there, it's after someone's been found dead there. Mm-hmm. So these, uh, they're, they're actually not called ghost facers at this point, are no, they? No, it's that's what just. They but that, that, is, that is what they have become. Yeah, yeah, the legend has grown. And uh, you've got these two guys who are putting up on their website about the this legend of Mordecai and what he'd done in his time and stuff. And when Sam and Dean go there, like, nothing seems to stop him. Like, uh, rock salt doesn't stop him. I think iron doesn't stop him. So they're like, what? what is this? Like, and they notice like a couple of symbols and they're like and Dean ever ever the rock enthusiast is like have I seen this before and he's just drawn it all the time which is a nice little thing because he's like he's not just thinking from his mind he's actually drawn it going like how have I seen this it, you see it is proper annoying him and uh, they find out well they come to the conclusion it's Blue Oyster Cult Bl- I believe it is yeah yeah, so they come to the conclusion that it's the logo for the Blue Oyster Cult on one of their albums. It's like an upside down question mark with lines to make it look like an inverted cross. And it's that kind of detective work from the two of them that actually shines through throughout the entire show. Like, it's like when something gets in their head, they will fucking not stop until they find out what it is. Or a good way to stop something, you know. And in this sh- uh, in this episode especially, it's it's put at the forefront that these two used to play pranks on each other as kids and it it's amazing. Like this this proper makes it feel like a real like emotional attachment. This is stuff like this makes you love the characters, you know. Uh, aye, and like there's a good few of them that I would probably say would be crossing the line. There's another one that Sam touches the, the car up a wee bit. Yeah, that's uh, that I one think season two for with the trickster. For those of you who don't know, Sam uh, Dean's car, um, baby. Yes, baby. Is, uh, six, is it's a 1969? 67? 67. It's an Impala, anyway. Yes. 
Um, it's a beautiful car. It is fucking gorgeous. Um, like that's a kind of car that you would like love until the end of oh time. He keeps it in good nick, and it's it's basically Dean's house. Yeah, like yeah, it's a house. But on it's the road. not like it's not like when you hear someone living in a car, like they're fucking got everything <laughs> over the place. He keeps this car doing like immaculate, pretty much. Yeah. Um, like even with all the guns in the, oh, in the fucking trunk. Of course, trunk. of course. Um, but I, like. When you find out that Sam's fucking pranked him by uh, mucking about with the electricity, uh, like electronics in the car, you kind of feel like punching Sam in the fucking oh, balls, man. Come like, on, don't you don't you? touch a car. Uh, you don't. You don't touch baby, man. Like, aye. You need to put baby in a corner. Aye. Oh. Hey. <laughs> uh, I think that is a trickster episode that they do that, and and obviously, uh, Dean does some stuff to Sam's computer and the things. It like that carries throughout the show that they are. At the end of the day, they do hunt things, but they are still brothers and they can still have a nice jokey time, which, I said before, you need that humour to draw you in. It makes you draw uh, close attachments to the characters and actually feel for them when they go through a bad situation. You're like, oh no, such and such has happened to them. and you know. Uh, so this episode has a really good theme to it. So... We'll just call them for it anyway. The ghost facers are adding all this lore to this character, to this Mordecai on their website, and it's changing as time goes on. As the word is getting to the masses, the hashtag the shit out of that stuff by the looks of it, because it's like lots of people are make a lot of traffic's coming in their site. Yeah, maybe we should take a leaf out of their book. Yeah, just I'm <laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> let's be honest, and. Stuff that's been said is actually making it come to fruition. It's it's making it come into the real world and change things. Like the change that uh, is that Mordecai was shot and he's got an eternal fear of firearms and iron rod uh, bullets. bullets, which is a nice little kind of like how did you find that out? You know, uh, they they. Sam and Dean created a death certificate on this and then gave them information like, oh, well, apparently he's scared of this. So once the uh, legend spread, it actually uh, made them succumb to these things as a normal ghost would. And something happens where it's very strange. They try to defeat the ghost and they can't. For some reason they can't because the lore hasn't been written because it's changing throughout time. As time goes on and as different things come out about him or are made up, funnily enough, it's changing the power that this ghost has, which is absolutely amazing when you come to think about it. It's very reminiscent of Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, there's a line that Johnny Depp's character uh, gives to Heather Langenkamp saying about we give the power to these monsters and the only way to take to defeat them is to turn our back on them. Mm-hmm. So I love how that is a like I said, this season is more of a horror show and it has a nice throwback to horror movies and stuff and it is more indie movie style horror episodes. So I love that little throwaway line that kind of connects to everything like uh, and ultimately there is one line at the end that Sam says once they realise they can't defeat him they're just going to burn down the house and Sam goes what if he comes back like what if the legend changes that he can escape the house and Dean just goes well we'll, we'll come back like it's the only way we're going to be able, they're going to be able to deal with it now it's like, yeah it's, it's like, that fucked up yeah uh, like it's, that's the thing like burn it down like he can't escape the house by lore so burn down the house, you know, what's he going to do? And Sam says this line where it's it actually is a knock-on eff- effect for everything that's to come in the show. And it's and it's this line, kind of makes you wonder, of all the things ever we ever hunted, how many existed just because people believed in them? Makes you think, man. Makes you think. That is powerful. Like, if you think all the monsters that come in the show later on, how many have, like, existed because of that? How many's changed because of that? I'm sure there's even the Slenderman episode, hashtag Slender, in season 10 or 11, 
that's obviously aye, aye, a fairly actually. recent uh, kind of horror legend. Yeah, that shit's scary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Slenderman <laughs> fucking creeps me out. Like that's that's a genuine horror thing. But oh. that is something that actually dates back into like I think it's Germany and stuff. I think so. Like, it like I I think it's maybe like within the last fifty hundred years or something. Like if a, like a tall <laughs> man kind of legend. Aye. Um. So like obviously it's definitely got the power behind it to keep a lot of people out, but at the same time keep bringing them back. Yeah. Um. Like, especially like the Slenderman thing. Obviously, that's slowly becoming a bit more. Well, well I don't know if it's depopularized now, but like yeah. obviously because of the game and all that, like it was really popular a couple of years ago. Um, I don't know, I don't know if you've seen the new Parallel and uh, the new Blair Witch as well. No. I've oh yet to see shit! That. See that man? Like, what well, am I going to shut myself? Uh, fucking eye. Oh fuck yes! Yeah, I'll watch it and then I'll shut myself and then I'll cower in the corner for a it's, week. It's creepy as shit, man. Like it's. It, it's almost on par with the first one. That's how nice. that's how good it is. Um, but I continuing on with supernatural. Yes. Um, what would you say would be your favorite one then? Like the the many that we've discussed today. Yeah, I would. I have to really say Hell House. There's a lot of nice things in it that play on down the line. Like the pranking between the brothers is a major one. It shows that. They're not just all serious, like, oh, we hunt things, save people, it's a family business. Like, they do actually have or a Or business, according to my tattoo. Yes. Just saying. <laughs> it's American spelling. Uh, yeah, it's it's something that does play on down the line with the characters and stuff. And you, you do get an emotional attachment through them because that's what you do with siblings you, and friends. You, you know, you joke about and play tricks on each other and stuff and it does have its scary scary episodes and stuff so it's very like season one is the sh- i would definitely say the scariest season and they play it so well with each other that it's one of the finest moments of the show and mm. what about yourself mine's as i said probably be the bloody mary one because it was the most sort of realistic one, like, well, f- not the most realistic, but it's the first sort of realistic one that I, I caught my eye on, and I was like, damn, I'm not going to mess with her. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, obviously, it kind of, not that the, other, the the four episodes before didn't grasp me, like, that Aye. obviously did, so since they, I kept watching well, the Well, that's the thing. thing, you've stayed watching, you've stayed loyal to but the But at show. the same time, like, that's the one that kind of stood out the most for me, because it's something that I've heard of before, and... It made me shit myself pretty much, yeah. like watching it. So it's something like, and it obviously just in, increased the fear of fucking mirrors in the dark, <laughs> by, um, <laughs> which is apparently a bit of claustrophobia. I've been told, but yeah, I, um, so I I probably go with Bloody Mary. Like I don't know how many times I've said it, in there, but I haven't been looking in the reflective surface. Oh, <laughs> do, do glasses count? <laughs> Yeah, Bloody Mary is it, it's one of the major scary episodes for me. And that was between... It, my favourite episode was between Bloody Mary and Hell House. Both because they are genuinely scary episodes. But, you know, the, the light-heartedness of Hell House did kind of prevail with it as the show has changed towards that side a little bit more, a little bit more fun, a little bit more kind of bro man say like yeah we we're brothers but you know we we we're sc- we hunt these th- evil things but you know we still have time to mess about with each other yeah just like brothers should do yes so that was our recap of season one that was our kind of best uh we'll definitely be bringing more folk on the show hope down the line yeah to do future best ofs because Let's be honest, Supernatural is a show that we both love. Like, yeah. we we said that we got on it maybe what nine, six years ago, Aye, respectively, Aye. Uh, ago, and it's a show that keeps on giving. Like, uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, it's oh, it's not the show I've watched, or it's not the show that I loved when it came on." Well, 
Of course it's not. If yeah. you have 13 seasons of a show and it stays the same, it's going to get old very fast. So for them to constantly change it up and spice it up and add new characters and change the lore and add different things to it. So like, yeah, you do have to spice things up and change the direction a little because otherwise it's going to get old very fast and you're going to drive away your audience for not evolving with times. Yep. So, so have you got anything else to add? No, I think you cover though. Oh. <laughs> well, on that note, we have had a lot of fun today talking about this. Yes. And Definitely like we said, we will be getting more people on. Definitely a good starting point anyway. Yeah. Oh, that's and we won't, we won't just be sticking to Supernatural. We will obviously do other shows. Of course. Maybe I reckon Morty. Constantine. Constantine. Constantine got to do Constantine. Oh, got to. Got to do the movie as well. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, because whenever I sell this show to anyone, I go, it's like a two-person American Constantine. Like, but they're brothers. And it That's is a, a hell of a lot better. That wasn't hard. Because <laughs> right in, in the start of season one, they just use kind of weapons to defeat things, like That's monsters and stuff. But as later as the show goes on, they use magical items, they use actual spells to cast out demons and Thor's hammer whatever. makes an appearance at one point yes. as well, which is fucking hilarious. Yes. <laughs> and uh, that's the thing. The show evolves and adds to the lore of the characters as time goes on. So it's a, this is a brilliant place to start watching it, and yes. I hope you do. Definitely. And I also will get you into, obviously, other sorts of genres like this, because this is what got me into like Constantine and oh whatnot yeah. as well. So it's definitely something to look out and try and find. If you can watch it anywhere. Um, I think that's us. You want to sign off? I'll sign off. Um, So, obviously, you can catch us on Facebook, Twitter. We're on the YouTubes now, doing the YouTube things. Uh, Hopefully, have some videos up soon. We've we've currently got a few of the podcasts up just now. um, And we're going to obviously be adding to the content the more we keep doing this. Yeah, Um, of course. We're on SoundCloud and iTunes. And don't... Oh, Ripped Apparel as well. Yeah, forget can't apparel. forget Ripped. Because we're both currently sitting in Ripped Apparel t-shirts. Yes, we are. Nothing else. Of Nothing course. <laughs> <laughs> what else um, is there to wear? <laughs> like, th- what do you judge me for? Like, someone who doesn't wear stuff, you know, that I, that I preach about? Yeah. Sake. So, Ripped Apparel, we have our code, which is Glaswegian Geeks, which will get you 10% off at Ripped Apparel. Ripped Apparel, obviously do... Ripped Brilliant apparel. supernatural stuff, you know, like... I own quite a lot of supernatural uh, styled and themed tees from Ripped yeah. and they are amazing. They don't just do tees, remember? They do tank hoodies. tops, hoodies. Uh, Baby tees. Well, kids kids t-shirts tees. as well. Get your kids fun to do it with these. Posters, coasters and all that jazz. So remember, head over to Ripped Apparel, get your shopping basket full, get 10% off. Yeah, save yourself a little bit of cash. Really? And look good doing it. Of course, look good. Anytime on the beach, having a walk through a city centre. I thought you were going to say something else beginning with W there. Having a wank. Aye, that. That as well, you know. I'm not saying, hey, don't, you know. Whatever whatever floats your boat. Should have saved this for the sex criminal review. Oh, <laughs> Check it out. I can shoehorn that one in anytime. Don't worry. Uh, so, hope you've enjoyed listening to us today. And please check out all our stuff and use our ripped code. And thank you very much. And please remember to geek out.